Good morning, everyone. It has been about a week and a half since we got our roadkill moose, and we're going to be on to the next step and getting a little bit closer to getting it packaged up and inside of our freezer. So after we got our roadkill moose, we processed it at our neighbor's house. We hung it in their garage for about a week to age, and then it's been sitting inside our shelter logic for a few days now. So it's pretty much frozen solid. So our next step is going to be bringing all of this into the house, letting it thaw out, and then hopefully tomorrow we can start putting it in packages. Let's take a look at what we actually got from this moose. We split it with our neighbor, so we ended up with half of a moose. We got the hind end, the front, and then we have half of the rib cage here. This is our back strap, and then we have a bowl here with just a little bit of scrap meat that's gonna be ground up for burger. Our plans for this moose in general are to grind a lot of it and then just have some roasts. Since this is only half a moose and we're planning on hunting a moose this coming fall, we don't need this to last us too long. So we're not gonna be canning any of it. We're gonna be grinding a lot of it into burger. We are not gonna be making any sausage. And then like I said, we're just gonna keep a couple nice roasts for us. And then come springtime or summer, I might use some of those roasts and smoke it into some jerky. As far as what we're gonna be cutting this with to make our burger meat, in the past we've done a different mixtures. We've done some ground beef, we've done pork fat, which is our favorite, and that's what we wanted to do, but we weren't able to find any at the local butchers. None of them had any pork fat available. So we have three pounds of bacon that we're gonna be using to cut our meat. We need to get all of this moved into our little cabin today, so hopefully tomorrow morning it will be thawed out enough that we can start cutting it up. So let's get this all brought inside. Can we get her? Yeah. Got the bucket? Yeah, I'll grab it. Was it carcass on top? Sure. All right, as you can tell, we got our work cut out for us tomorrow. So hopefully by then this is thought out. We can get to work. We'll see you guys then. All right, guys, we're back in the kitchen. We're going to get started on processing this moose meat and we're going to start with the rib cage. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the buckets with the two quarters and the back strap and things like that, get those put on the ground, get these ribs laid out on the counter and get to work on it. All right, so the plan is with the rib cage, that is all going to be ground up into burger meat. So we're going to get started on that. Right here we have the back strap, which runs along the spine of the moose and it was bigger but we ate some of that. In here we've got some of the neck meat and we also have the tenderloin in here and as far as knives today we're going to be using a few different ones. We're going to use our little Havilon ones. We really like these. We're going to use a Mora. We're going to use a knife that was actually just sent to us which looks like a really nice knife. This is a Victorinox and then we'll probably be using just our Kershaw knife. We usually use this one for filet and salmon. Errol's going to jump in here. We're just going to start going to town on this thing and we're going to be keeping our meat in that bin for now until we grind it and with the rib cage there's no real special method here. Um, you can basically, doesn't have to be pretty, just you want to get all the meat you can. processed deer and caribou before, but this is definitely the biggest animal we've processed um, ourselves, and there's a lot of meat on the rib cage, which is really awesome. And this knife so far, really, really happy with it. Um, very, very good for this type of thing. I'm sure it would have come really in handy when we were butchering that pig last year. These Mora knives are also really nice. Um, we've gotten the carbon steel, I think that's what it's called, but this stainless one, this is a really good knife. We've had this one for, man, probably like four four years. We processed an entire deer with just that knife. Yeah, and these knives are like 15 bucks, so really good knife to have too. Yeah, those are the, that's the... Short ribs? Yeah. The back. So Eric and I are super excited for this moose. Not only because it's lots of meat, but it is, I want to just go out and say it's my favorite. 
large yep. animal the way it tastes. We had not tried it until we moved to Alaska and our neighbors were kind enough to give us some and that was the first time we tried it. And the best thing I could say it tastes like is like a really good cow. Yep. It's not like deer at all. Not gamey. It's not like elk and yeah, it's like beef, I guess. Beef. And yeah, you know, there's better cuts. There's more tender ones just like on a, on a cow. Um, but yeah, like the main reason we're just gonna be grinding this one up is we want to we want to go through it before fall comes when we're gonna hunt another moose and we really like burger meat. And third, this was a smaller moose. It was a two-year-old bull moose, and we split it with another family. So yeah, with the next moose, if we if we can get one in the fall, we want to do lots of canning, sausages. Jerkies, roasts, steaks. Maybe even make some jerky with this one though too. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna get it all cut up and see what we got. Got the rib cage flipped over and we're gonna start working on the inside. And again, quite a bit of meat. Just on the inside of this thing too. We also have um, like a trim area for our dogs. Of the less desirable things, but most of it's really good quality. And then I'm pretty sure that we're gonna cook some of this down into some bone broth, which will be really good. Yeah, we're doing bone broth again. This is all meat, I'm pretty sure. And another thing we wanted to point out is a tool that came in really handy, not only for cutting this section of ribs off the carcass, but also when we process the moose, and that was having a um, battery-powered sawzall. We used that to cut through the pelvis, we used it to cut through the ribs, and we used it to cut through um, the feet, or the, the ankle, I guess it would be, on the moose when we went to hang it. Okay, I think we're done with our carcass for now. Cool, so we're gonna stick this outside on the deck. It'll freeze out there, it's cold outside today. And then we're gonna get started on the next piece. Okay. Yeah. We kept the whole half of the right side of the moose. So this is its right front arm, which is really cool to look at, very long. So this one, we're gonna kinda of go the same way, get as much meat as we can, and then the way with roasts, how they work, is there's kinda of like a membrane, I guess you would call it, that kinda of separates the meat uh, into like okay. different types of roasts. Um, we probably will get a couple good ones off this front piece, and if we get some good ones that are good condition, we'll just keep them as roasts. And then the rest we're just gonna throw in the bin and grind it up. So this is a little bit too frozen for us. We're probably going to wait a little while till we can finish it. Um, the reason we didn't let it, you know, all thaw out is because not only is it easier to cut, but it's much better for the grinding process. Um, it's just a nightmare grinding meat and lard specifically if it's not frozen. It gets gummed up really fast in the grinder, so we like it partially frozen. And our dogs are going to get a little bowl of some of the stuff, just a few bones and some of the tissue we didn't want. We decided that we're going to cut up the shoulder. We waited a while for it to defrost more, but it's taken a lot longer. And then we're going to use the leg for roast. Yep, we're just going to keep cutting away on this, get all the meat. Ariel already did this little bottom section. And then after this front leg, we'll get the back leg up here, which is the bigger section. And then we'll tackle the back strap. And then we've got some trim in here. We also have the tenderloin in there, which we're going to take out of there. We'll probably eat that for dinner at night. Work on that one. We are getting down to kind of just the little tiny pieces. We're cutting off this front leg, and our tub is probably like three quarters full, so we have a ton of meat in there already. And this is still a tiny bit frozen, so I'm hoping by the time we get done with this and get that hind leg up here, uh, it'll be completely thawed out, and we'll easily be able to get some nice roast out of that. And yeah, we just got a little bit more trimming to do on this, and then we're going to get that one up here, and that'll be the biggest um, portion of the animal we're cutting up. So we still have a little more meat to work on, and Eric and I aren't super picky about the silver skin, and I mean, you know, we're avoiding cartilage or anything like that, but we have a really small, like, you know, dog bucket there. Um, we're just trying to get as much as we can off of it. 
So again, we're just going to be putting most of this, we're going to be grinding it and then trying to get some roast off the back leg. But one thing, if we are lucky to get a mousse in the fall that we want to try is corned mousse. That's always been something I really wanted to make. In the past, we've done a corned beef hash recipe um, canned and it's really, really good with potatoes, bell peppers, onions, and we really would love to try it with mousse. We are done with this one, so we're going to be putting it outside. I got it. I say we let this one defrost for a long time so we don't get those big. One thing I wanted to show you guys is these really cool moose hair or fur. It's like a bristle. And they're really, really thick. The closest thing I can think that they look like is like a broom. So I found that pretty fascinating when we were processing it. Or like an animal whisker. So with the back strap, the way we like to usually eat it is we'll either just cook it like in thick slices as like steaks, or another good way is we like to tenderize it and bread it with some egg and some flour and some cornmeal and fry it. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit, get off some of the skin and some of the fat, and then I'll cut it into nice chunks for us. These are some of the scraps we have so far, and we're going to run them over to the chickens. We're back in the kitchen, and we are going to be doing the leg now. I think it's mostly defrosted um, it's probably still a little frozen deep down in there we have our generator running we didn't get that much solar today so that's going to be going in the background i apologize for that sound so we're just going to start with cleaning this up and see if we can get some roasts off of it and go from there we're going to take a break and grind some of our meat because this is still frozen when we're getting down to the inner layers and i was going to show you guys this this is where the moose was hit on its butt and when we cut into it some of these bones were broken just a little bit so we're going to be careful when we're picking through this and we may not be able to salvage all that meat but for the most part again that moose really um, didn't get damaged very much for us all right today this little cabela's grinder is going to get probably the biggest workout of its life i don't think we've ever ground this much meat all at once and like we always do you want this meat uh, not frozen, but you want it a lot firmer than if it was just ready to eat. So that's how we have it, and as you can tell, it makes it just really easy to grind this. Usually the first part of your grinding process goes really fast. We have the coarse plate on here. See how it's coming out kind of thick, a little thicker than we want it? So basically we'll grind everything through here. We'll grind the fat that we're using, which is going to be three pounds of bacon, and we have a little bit of pork fat we're going to add to that. And then we're going to re-grind it all the way through a fine um, grinding plate and that'll be our finished product and then we're going to saran wrap it and put it in butcher paper and it's going to be a long night. Can I give you some yep, go ahead. Fine. For you. I'm Fine, fine. No, that's Bam Bam. So we've got all of the moose meat besides this back leg that we're still working on waiting for that to thaw out. We've got that all ground up once through the grinder. And now we're gonna be adding our pork fat and we're using bacon. We're gonna use three pounds of bacon. And then we had a little bag of pork fat from uh, the pig we bought a while back. So that's what we're gonna be using.
So like many of our projects, this completely went unplanned and the, unfortunately the leg's just way too frozen so what we're doing is having to section off some of the top pieces and then let you know the inner parts um, thaw out. But so far we're getting some really awesome cuts for some jerky. I think we're going to use them for jerky instead of you know roast but maybe we'll save them for roast too. The leg has really really good meat and um, not a lot of tendons and stuff like that so and we decided we're gonna be grinding the burger tonight and finishing the rest of this once it you know dethaws but we will be doing the packaging all tomorrow morning we don't want to be up till two in the morning so we're gonna pick back up with that tomorrow it's like a monster, <laughs> monster steak look at that layers of muscle look at that Jeez. beautiful that's burger here we're back everyone, it's the next morning, and this leg just took forever to thaw out. We, um, When we had it outside, it got really cold, it was in the negatives, and it froze literally to the bone. So we let it thaw out last night, back out here this morning, and it is a lot easier to cut. Ariel's taking those big old chunks of meat off there, like no problem. So I'm just cleaning these up. We're getting quite a bit of uh, nice cuts for roast and for making jerky down the road. So we're gonna finish up with this leg, we need to grind through the coarse grinder a little bit more and then we need to grind everything through the fine grinder and then we'll be able to package everything up. So this is the pelvis area and I think a lot of this meat, you know, there's not a lot of bone in it, but there's a lot of blood. So we're going to just end up giving this stuff to our dogs if I can't cut it off. But for the most part, we really, you know, don't have that much trim. There's a little bucket right down there. We gave some to the chickens the other day and the dogs have been eating some, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with how much we were able to get off this moose and that it wasn't hurt so badly. Now that we're done with this bone, we are going to switch our plate out in our grinder and Eric's going to grind all of the other meat, which is going to take a while. second run through the grinder it always takes us a little longer when we're running it through that coarse plate it's just harder to feed it through there and get it to go fast so this probably ran for uh, about an hour and a half or so and no problems whatsoever it's a good little grinder we have next step is we are going to get this meat in our big tub and we're gonna make sure it's all combined and all mixed up and then we're gonna package it this is all the burger meat we ended up with and we just estimate it's anywhere from about 50 to 70 pounds but we'll probably find out in a little bit when we actually weigh it. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it in one pound packages. What we like to use is saran wrap and then we wrap that in butcher paper, put a single piece of tape on it and then it's done. So let's get started. We finished up wrapping the hamburger meat. I think we have a little over 60 packages and we believe it's in the vicinity of 70 to 80 pounds. We're actually gonna weigh them just so we know to get a good idea. We have our tenderloin and our backstrap over here that we need to package and then we also have all of the meat outside that we need to package as well. But we are taking a break to cook up some of this meat first.
So this is all of our hamburger meat down here and we have 64 packages and we weighed it out and it is 70 pounds, including what we ate. So a really good amount of meat and we just have the rest of the roasts and what we're gonna use for jerky to wrap up and including the backstrap and the tenderloin. <laughs> what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with this? Don't know. <laughs> All right, so we are done. Yep, it was a lot of hard work. It took us a little longer than we thought, but this is the finished product. And how much meat did we end up with? Just over 100 pounds, 101 pounds when we did all the math. Yep, and that was half of the moose, so pretty good. And uh, I think this, we'll probably go through this in probably six months. Yeah, we don't really buy any other meat at all. So this is, this is I, even though it's a lot of meat, we're gonna go through it, I think, before hunting season so yeah yeah I think the only meat we have left is we have a little bit of our pig left and we have some of our canned salmon so we're really thankful to have this meat and we tried it earlier and this stuff is awesome I mean it's wonderful you literally you can't buy this stuff I mean legally you can't buy it but it's hard to put a price on it even if you could that's how good it is we, we absolutely love it and again if we are lucky to get one in the fall we plan to do a lot more canning with that moose and just sausage and all that. We've uh, are a little burnt out this year. We've done a lot, and since this is a smaller portion, we just wanted to do this. That's one of our favorite ways to eat it. Another thing I wanted to mention was this knife that we used for the first time, and it was awesome. I don't know how you pronounce that. Yeah, it's a Victorinox. It's a company that makes like the um, what's that called? The Swiss Army knife? Yeah, the Swiss Army knife. It's the company that makes that. Lovely. It was really, really wonderful. Um, we did have a really good learning experience this time because it was partially frozen, which we know to never do that again. Yep. And um, it was just good to see like the leg meat, really, really good meat. And so we know now when we're processing an adult that that's what we're going to be saving for really good cuts and a lot of the rest can be made into sausage or... What do you think? How was the experience? Yeah, it was perfect. It was a great experience. We got to go out and just have a moose put in our trailer, take it back home, take our time processing it, and you know, we gotta hang it in our neighbor's garage, which was awesome. And it's just really gonna come in handy next year because we, you know, next year we're gonna be out in the field hopefully processing the moose. It's gonna be a little bit harder, but now we kinda know what we're doing. So all in all, I think it was a really good experience. With that being said, we are going to get all of this meat put away outside in the freezer. Yep, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> You got it? All I can do okay. is like shift with my hips. Okay. There we go. Okay, there we go.